In this video, I will be discussing and showcasing some of the new features in the Axonius 2.10 release. The topics include new adapters, updated adapters, enforcement center updates, updated action, device and user interface updates, administrative settings interface updates, and general UX enhancements. The fun is about to start. Are you ready? First, let's take a look at the new adapters added in 2.10. We are now up to 150 adapters and we're adding more in every release. Isinga is an open source cloud computer system and network monitoring application. It monitors data centers, cloud availability, performance, provides access to data, and raises alerts. Mitigate is a medical device security platform that protects connected medical devices on healthcare providers' networks, allowing inventory management and facilitating detection and prevention capabilities. PacketFence is a free open source network control NAC solution that provides the following features. Registration, detection of abnormal network activities, proactive vulnerability scans, isolation of problematic devices, remediation through a captive portal, 802.1x wireless integration, and user agent and DHCP fingerprinting. SecOps inventory collects and reports information on hardware, software, registry, user settings, operating systems, security data, and Active Directory data. We've made several updates and enhancements to multiple adapters in this release. The first new addition is a fetch information about S3 checkbox, located within AWS configuration tab in the advanced setting for this adapter. If enabled, this checkbox will have all connections for this adapter to collect information about S3 buckets in addition to other instance types. The information collected for each S3 bucket instance will include ACLS, location, and public status. In addition, we have added the fetch information about IAM users checkbox to the AWS configuration tab in the advanced setting for this adapter. If enabled, this checkbox will have all connections for this adapter to collect information about IAM user. The information collected for each IAM user will include attached groups, attached policies, and access keys. This adapter now supports a direct connection to the database for BlueCat. We have added a new Git Devices Policy checkbox to the CrowdStrike configuration tab in the advanced settings for this adapter. If enabled, this checkbox will have all the connections for this adapter collect prevention policies associated with devices. We have also added several new fields to the add server dialog for this adapter. If supplied, these new fields allow you to fetch a CSV file from an Amazon S3 bucket. The S3 bucket name field allows you to specify the name of the bucket to get the CSV file. The S3 object location field allows you to specify the object location, the file path. Lastly, we have added the S3 key ID and the S3 secret key fields. These new fields let you specify the credentials to access the S3 bucket. You can leave both of these fields empty to use the IAM rule that is attached to the Axonius EC2 instance. We have added a new custom tag whitelist field in the Cyber Reason Configuration tab in the advanced setting for this adapt. This new field lets you specify a comma separated list of Cyber Reason tags. If supplied, all connections for this adapter will only collect devices tagged in the Cyber Reason with tags provided in this list. There is now a new server tag field that has been added to the add server dialog for this adapter. This new field lets you specify a value that will be set in the server tag field for all asset collected from a specific connection for this adapter. Next, we have added a new query search field to the add server dialog for this adapter. This new field lets you specify a search query using Shodan's search query syntax. If supplied, a connection for this adapter will only collect devices that return from this query. There is now a new exclude device without IP, MAC, and serial number checkbox that has been added 
to the ServiceNow configuration tab and advanced settings for this adapter. If enabled, all connections for this adapter will only collect information on devices if they have an IP address, MAC address, or serial number. We have exciting new updates to the Axonia Security Policy Enforcement Center within this release. The following actions have been enhanced in the 2.10 release. Several fields have been added to the Add Action dialog for this action. These fields allow you to upload files to a Linux device and then execute those files. We have added a new file to deploy control. This control lets you choose a file to be uploaded, multiple files, can be provided and existing files are overridden. The upload path field allows you to specify the path to upload the files on a Linux device if not populated. These files are uploaded to the TMP folder. A new delete files after execution checkbox have been added. If enabled, the files will be deleted after executing a specified command line. The upload file permission field allows you to specify the permissions given to the uploaded files. This defaults to 777. We have added a new alternative suffix field to the add action dialog for this action. If an alternative suffix field is provided like axonius.com and axonius.org, both will be searched in Have I Been Pwned. This field is useful for organizations that utilize more than one email suffix. We have added a new authorization header field to the Add Action dialog for this adapter. This field is required if the HTTPS log system requires a user authentication. If provided, the value will be supplied in the headers of the HTTPS request sent to the log system. The message sent to Slack will now include the first five results of the save query. The following updates have been made to the device and user related capabilities in Axonius. The available column list allows you to select a column to include in the table. The displayed column list displays the columns that are included in the table. This list can be reordered by Drag it and drop in a column. The order of the columns in this list will be reflected in CSV exports. We have added the add and remove buttons which allow you to move columns to and from the available column list and the display column list. The reset button sets the display columns list back to the default view. Queries can now be saved with the columns in the display columns even when there's no query expression has been defined. These queries can be loaded and used as a template for building new save queries with the predefined columns and column filters. We have added a last use user AD display name data field. This field will reflect the Active Directory AD display name associated with a specific device. The value of this field is for most AD implementations, a user's first name followed by their last name. The following updates have been made to the administrator setting interface. A new static analysis setting checkbox has been added. If enabled, Axonis will fetch vulnerabilities even if the software vendor name is unknown. If not enabled, Axonis will only fetch vulnerabilities if they include both software and vendor names. This checkbox is not enabled by default. We have made some great new updates in the Axonius UX, so let's dive right in and take a look. We have modified the visualization of Boolean fields to make the X and V values more clear. X has been replaced with no for false, and V has been replaced with yes for true. These features are now available in Axonius and can be accessed by customers right now. As always, please reach out to support at axonius.com with any issues or feature requests. Talk to you later.